check in with you on the first problem. Make sure he's doing okay. Is there an obvious inside function? More importantly, is there a function whose derivative is in there also? Yes. Yeah, you know, like u equal cotangent. What is d? Negative cosecant. Where? Then you can identify. Well, in this case, do I have too much, don't I? In a way, right? Don't I have a three in there I don't need? Can't I just take that out? And at the same time, what do I really need there? What does du need that's not there now? Negative. So I'm going to take a 3 out. And at the same time, I can multiply by a negative. So then this, what is, what is this here? The guys on this problem here, this is another what I would call a classic u sub problem. What would you make u equal to? Good, x to the 7 fifth minus 4. Because if I have sine of a single thing, that's easy, I can do it. I, you could think maybe make it u equal x to the 7 fifth, this derivative is in there, but then you would still have a minus 4 tacked onto that, that would kind of suck a little bit. So yeah, I can make it. And again, it's, I call it a classic problem because the u is the function that's inside something else. So if I let u equal x to the 7 fifths minus 4, what's du? 7 fifths. 7 fifths. 2 fifths. Yes. Yeah. So I have x to the 2 fifths, which is the important part, right? I'm missing the coefficient, the constant coefficient, because of shit. What can I put on the outside? Good. So reciprocal. So I can rewrite this as 5 sevenths integral 7 fifths x to the 2 fifth sine of x to the 7 fifths minus 4. Which my side work. Can I see du? Yes. Right? I can see DU. There it is. I built it. I built this DU. All right, Jeff, stop it. So this is DU. And then what's this? Sine of freaking U. Sorry, I'll come. I mean, that's, that's too good to believe. I mean, look at what it started off as. And look at what we've made it into now. And again, that's what it was for, for is sine of shit times the derivative of that shit. That's exactly what R says. Sign your shit times the derivative of that shit. Axel, you have a, you're good? So why did you do the reciprocal? Oh, because um, if I put, if I multiply this by something, I have to undo it at the same time. I can't just change the problem that was given to me. So what's 5 7 times 7 fifths? One. So did I change the problem? No. But what I did was I reorganized shit in the problem. So now what's on the inside is exactly what I need. And this guy just comes from the right. And we've done that before. I don't know if you remember. We did this one problem where we were proving something and I added something and subtracted the same thing. I don't know if you guys remember that. No, you're not like, I don't remember anything. All right. Uh, but that happens we, we, because that makes it into a form I can do more with. So what's the interval of sine? Negative, Negative cosine. And then the last thing I have to do is take the negative out. Cosine of what? Do I put in here? 
next to the seven twins. Yeah. Yes. I love it. Crazy shit. Crazy shit. So real quick, the rate of this would be negative five sevens times sine. Negative cancels, but it's going to be negative sine. This times the derivative of this, the seventh fifth would come down, kill this, exactly what I see happening. And then x to the 2 fifth would be on the outside, which is exactly what it looked like at the beginning. Okay. Here's, okay. Has anyone looked at number 3 yet? Do you, do you think you see what to do? Yeah. Well, uh, listen, listen, listen. Uh, that looks weird. But is there an inside function? What is it? All right, let's, let's try it, right? No, you can't, if you pick the wrong thing and you try it, then your paper's not going to explode, right? It's not chemistry class. I think it's this one. <laughs> oh, I guess it um, Let's try it. U equals 1 minus 3x. That looks like it's not prime. It's like, I don't know, what the shit's that going to do for me? What's the derivative? Negative 3 dx. Yeah. Negative 3 dx. Yeah. Do I see that in there? Forget about the constant. Yeah. Do you yeah. see dx in there? Can I make a negative 3 show up next to it? Yeah, I'm golden. I'm golden. Right? So let's see, I, I need a negative 3 here, right? So let me put a negative 3 here. I just did something illegal. Now it's legal. So negative 3 dx. Negative 3 dx is du, yes? And 1 minus 3x squared becomes u squared. Is that an integral we can do? That is an integral we can get behind. Yes. You guys? You guys been all right? That was the first one that looked weird. But again, we brute forced the sucker. Well, there's an obvious inside function. Well, let's try that. Uh, what's this integral? Oh, the new power would be negative one, and then I have to divide by it. So it becomes positive one third u to the negative one, and u was one minus three. Crazy shit. That was the first example of one that didn't look the way we're used to it looking, but you subbed it, can you sub like I got you? Don't worry. Real quick thing I want to point out. Um, back here, do you remember? So do you see how the inside is cubed? So I better have a squared. The inside here is fifth power, so I better have a fourth power, yes? The inside here is the first power, right? So I better have a zeroth power up here, I do. Oh, we do. I got what I need. All right, number four is due. I kind of prepared you for this a minute ago. This one's, well. Has everybody tried this one yet, number four? Some of you guys are like, I'm still on number two, man. <laughs> This one might be a little more obvious because of the earlier problem we did with natural log, but, but it doesn't fall into our normal way. Is there an inside function? Not really. But the more general way to look at it is, is there a function in there whose derivative is in there also? Let me ask you this really important question. Is there an x in there? Yeah. Nope. There is a 1 over x in there. You see that? You see that? Uh, whatever, Jeff. But that's sort of important, right? So, but so if I let u equal what? Ln. Yeah, if um, u is ln x, its derivative is one over x is in there. All right. So that's why u sub more generally is is there a function in there whose derivative is in there also? And normally it's the inside function, but like this one's showing you, it doesn't have to. So if I let u equal ln du is 1 over x dx. So I'm going to rewrite this. 
ln x is u. 1 over x dx is du. And it's hard to get a better integral than that. What is the integral of that? 1 half u squared plus c. And then u was? ln x. Again, this is a real easy check. Derivative of this would be 2 times 1 half is 1 times ln x times the derivative of ln x, which is 1 over x, ln x over x. Bam. inside function. There kind of is. It's inside one over stuff, right? So the inside function. Is there a function whose derivative looks to be, yeah, the x squared because there's an x on top, right? So we're going to hope that it matches. So if I just try to let u equal x squared plus 6x, what does that lead to? Yeah, I get du is 2x plus 6 dx. Can I make that show up? Yeah, all I have to do is double the top, which means on the outside I need one half, right? So I got one half. Don't worry about the limits right now. x squared plus 6x is u. And what is 2x plus 3 dx? Do u. Now let's worry about the limits, right? That's always the last thing I kind of worry about when I'm rewriting this. So we cool with that? You guys see that? 2x plus 6, 2x plus 6 dx is du. And I normally put that off on the side just so I can see what I'm working with. So there's a 1 up top, and then the bottom is what we call du. What, what are the limits coming here? When x is 1, u is 7, right? And when x is 3, is that the other one? Yeah. When x is 1, u is 7. When x is 3, u is supposed to be 27, right? All right, so this is going to be really beautiful. Okay. So I get 1 half. What's the integral of 1 over u? ln u. Normally I need an absolute value, but why am I not going to put it? I know I don't need it here. Because what are all my u's? They're all positive. So in general, I have to put an absolute value if you don't know what it is. But here, I know it's, it's all positive shit. So why would I put an absolute value? You guys see that? If there were negative shit there, I need an absolute value. You could put one there, just always. And it ain't going to do anything to it. So I'll go ahead and put it there. Because that's the general rule, right? Do I need to put plus c? No. And this is evaluated between 7 and 27. So I get 1 half natural log of 27. Why did I put, that's hilarious. <laughs> All right. Minus 1 half natural log of 7. Otherwise known as the natural log of the square root of 27 over 7. Does anyone see how I did that? I don't know either. Can't I take the 1 half back up as a power? Right, is that how logs work? So it's the square root of 27, natural log square root of 27 minus natural log square root of 7. And then when I subtract logs, that's the log of the quotient. Do you have to do that? No. I just want to remind you. You could. All right, here we go. Last one. Look at that. Perfect timing today, Jeff. What is 
se well, there's two things really weird with this, and I didn't mean the first thing. What do you notice about this integral that doesn't quite do what it's supposed to? It's in terms of m. Say it. It's in terms of m. Yeah. What's this? And the d says it should be with the x's, right? So I wanted to make an integral with a different letter, and then I forgot to change. So just change this to an m. Now, if I would have put that on a test, uh, the whole m plus 5 over minus 2 could come out because it would be a constant then according to the thing, right? But that's not what I did. Okay. So what's the second weird thing? Does, does u sub look like it's going to work? Because what would you want to make u equal? The other thing. The m minus 2, right? Isn't that the one that's kind of stuck? But what's the derivative of m minus 2? dm. So I don't get that extra, what the shit, Jeff? Two things you did wrong. Way to go, buddy. All right, so, but watch this. What do we do? We brute force the sucker. What's, you, what's what you have? Let's try with minus two. That's not, I mean, come on, that's the only thing. And so what's the u? Yeah. Yeah. So we're right where we said we would be, Jeff. <laughs> but look, look, here's the cool, here's the first extra flexibility you have with u sub that unfortunately not everybody shows their students. U is m minus two. The whole purpose of u sub is to take all the m shit and replace it with u shit, right? If u is m minus two, what is m? U plus two, yes? So when, I, when we write this statement, we're inherently writing two statements. You just don't think of it that way. Especially because I haven't shown you until now. So it's not your fault. So what does that do for me? Well, what's m minus 2? What, what can I put there now? What's m minus 2? U. What is m? So what is m plus 5? Yes. And what is dm? Have I replaced all the M shit with U shit? Yes. So there's more flexibility in what you can do because, again, if U is M minus 2, M is automatically U plus 2. That's the reciprocal relationship, right? Now, what do I do with that shit? You can break it into yeah, U over U and 7 over U, right? Whenever the bottom is a single term, that kicks so much ass. You just break it up. So what's U divided by U? Of course, what do I have to do right now before I forget? I'm so focused on the inside, I still need to do what? The interval. Yeah, the interval. So when u is 3, I'm sorry, when m is 3, what's u? 1. When m is 5, u is? So it goes 1 to 3, right? Because u is just m minus 2. So you just take 2 away from what m wanted to do. And like we just said, u divided by u is 1, 7 divided by u is 7 divided by u. What's the integral of 1? u. Oh, okay. And that kick ass, right? Integral of a constant, you just throw a variable on it, right? From 1 to 3. Plus, what's the integral of 7 over u? 7 And it should be absolute value. Well, it could be absolute value, but it didn't have to. So then I get, let's see if you guys are cool with this. 3 minus 1, right? When I plug a 3 in, when I plug a 1 in, 3 minus 1 is 2. And then I get 7 natural log of 3 minus 7 natural log of 1. What's, seven, what's natural log of 1? 0. 0. So I get this crazy sauce. How do I check that? Well, I put this in the calculator to see what decimal it is. And then I put this in there and do the integral from 3 to 5. And I see if I get the same decimal. Crazy sauce. All right. You guys are like, shit, this stuff never stops coming at me. <laughs> I know this is weird, especially if you have trouble with just basic integrals. You're definitely going to have trouble with this. It just, it just is. Uh, that's enough for today. So um, I haven't announced. Did I announce the next quiz or anything? 
let's see. Are we ready for a quiz? No. No, we just had a quiz, right? Yes. All right, let's, let's, I'll give you a break from quizzes for a bit. That's plenty. All right, guys. I'll see y'all Friday or sooner. Thank you.